Welcome to the Maximizer Import Tool, which has been redesigned to let you do multiple imports in one pass. Before you begin, make sure you have permission to do an import. Go to Administration, Administrator, Users, click on a user, click on Access Rights, click on Modify User Access Settings, and make sure there is a check mark next to Allow Import. Now look at the Excel list that you intend to import. Make sure that each column has only one piece of information per line, has an easy to recognize name, and contains consistent data. To import notes, put each note into a separate column. The import will put each of them into a separate note in the Entries Notes window. Back in the Address Book, click on Import and File Import. In brackets you will see that this tool applies to Excel, CSV, and tab delimited files. The links to the old import tools are still available for now. Click on File Import to go to the Import Manager where we can now start a new import, access saved import templates, and view our import history. Click on Start a new import. Select the Excel file that we were looking at and then identify the kind of records we will import. In this case we are going to import both company and contacts in a single pass. We can also do this for individuals and their associated contacts in a single pass and we can import opportunities and the companies or individuals they are related to along with any associated contacts. We can usually leave the global import settings options as we find them and then click Next. On this import rules page we tell Maximizer how to perform the import and how to handle potential duplicates. The first drop-down allows you three options for an action for the import. The second drop-down specifies what action will be performed if a record exists. These choices can be modified on a field-by-field -field basis in the next section where we map the fields. Note that if you select here, add only new records currently not in Maximizer, there will be no choices here for if a record exists because you have chosen to ignore any records that are duplicates. In other words, there is no need to specify how duplicates will be handled. For our example, we will select Add New Records and Make Updates to Existing Records and Update Only Empty Maximizer Fields with Data from the Import File. Clicking Next brings us to the page where we map incoming data to the correct fields in Maximizer. This line right here reminds us of the type of import that we are doing. The fine print here reminds you of what the column is for, and the fine print over here gives you a preview of the values in the first three rows of the file being imported. The default value for each field is Don't Import, but when I click on a field that I want to import, the Field Picker dialog box comes out. For this company field, I pick a value from the available company fields. As I make the choice, the highlight automatically goes to the next line, where I can quickly choose the value that I want for that field, and so on. After I have finished all my company fields, I move on to my contact fields and make choices from these fields over here. For example, for customer last name, I'll pick last name, the highlight moves down to first name, where I select first name, and so on down through the rest of the list. When I'm done, the result will look like this. If I find that I have made a mistake, such as here, this should be the zip code rather than state or province, I can click on the field, I can put the correct value in, but if I get a message like this it means that I've already used that value somewhere else and I look here and realize that is indeed the case. So I'll take this one, return it to Don't Import, I'll come here and pick my zip and postal, then I'll come back down to State and pick State and Province, and I'm looking good. Now I click anywhere with my left mouse button to retire the field picker box and I look at the third column which is where we tell Maximizer how to check for duplicates. For our example at least one field for company and one field for contacts are needed for duplicate checking. If you do not make any selection the import will not proceed until you do set a duplicate check field. I select company name for the company check field and I select customer last name and customer first name for my contact checking. The fourth column 
allows us to change on a field-by-field -field basis the default field action that would be based on our choices in the preceding rules section. Generally, the alternatives will be add one empty and replace. However, if a mapped field is a multi-value table field, the option to append will also be available. But remember, this choice can only work for existing items in that table field. It will not create a new item for an existing table field. In the fifth and final column, we can adjust how the data is imported again on a field-by-field -field basis. Take a moment to look at the words in your alternatives here and how they are presented. For example, as imported means that the way that we see the data is how it will be imported. Convert to title case means that the first letter of each word will be capitalized, and so on. By the way, none of these alternatives affects numbers. Numbers will be imported as they appear in your Excel file. The next page summarizes all the choices that we have made for the import. We are creating a new list with this import. We're importing companies and contacts. Here are the choices we made on the rules page. A green check mark indicates what we've selected for duplicate checking. Our choices have been grouped by company and by contact. And samples of data from the import file are included here so that we can check if the field is mapped correctly. If you see something you want to change, you can click back and go to the previous screen and make your changes. But if you do that, you will have to remap some or all of the fields that you have already mapped. Finally, click on Save Template to create a template from this import. Click here, give your template an appropriate name, and click Save. We click Finish when we are done, and this brings us back to the Import Manager page where we can actually watch in the status field how the import is progressing. Once the import is done, you can see the number of rows that were reviewed, you can see how many were imported successfully, how many failed, and how many were skipped. You can click on the success indicator and look at a favorite list and maximizer of those entries that imported successfully. You can also click on the arrow in the failure cloud or the skip cloud if there is one to open an Excel report with those entries so you can see for yourself why they failed to import. When we click on the failed entries and open Excel and scroll over to the far right hand side where it says message, we can click on the column and message here and read why we had the failure. In the column do not solicit by, map to do not solicit by, the cell value carrier pigeon does not match a table item of the map field. That means that if I want to actually import this as it is, I have to go back into Maximizer, add that value, that item, to the table field of Do Not Solicit By, and then I'll have to do a re-import. Similarly down here under Company, we see that the row was not imported because the record exists and there were no fields that required an update. On the Contact side, however, in the column Do Not Solicit By, the cell value email, comma, phone, comma, fax does not match a table item of the mat field. Remember, we need to have one piece of information only per column in anything that we're importing, which is why this one failed. After I fix these two errors, I go to File, Save As, give the Excel sheet with those two errors an appropriate name, and save it. I then close the sheet and proceed to re-import those two entries. I click on our new import template, I select the error file that I've just fixed, and then I click Next. I click Next again. This is the mapping that has already been done because we're working with a template. So I click Next. I'm at my summary sheet now. This time, instead of creating a new list, I want to add to the list we just recently imported. I review the summary sheet. When I'm satisfied, I click Finish. Once again, I'm back at the Import Manager. And once again, I'm reviewing this and waiting for the import to complete. When the import is finished, I notice that the two rows I corrected have been successfully imported. And if I click on the Success Indicator, Maximize will open up the address book and show me the entries that I have successfully imported from my Excel sheet. And I can see all six companies, 
and all six contacts that were successfully imported from my Excel spreadsheet. In the future, if I want to check this same list of entries again, I can go to View, Favorite Lists, and select this list that was just imported. The next time that I want to do an import, if I'm working with the same kind of data set as I just did, I can use one of my most recent templates or click on Manage Import Templates to make a selection from any of the earlier templates that I might have created. And by the way, if I use an existing template but make changes to it as I'm moving down through the process, when I come here to my Summary page, I can click Save the Template and click here to save the template with the changes that I've put into place. Or I can choose Save As and give the template a different name so that I preserve the original template and now have a new template with the changes that I've made to that original one. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can also use this tool to import opportunities and associate the correct company and contact with each opportunity. Just as you saw for company and contact, which we did today, the fields associated with an opportunity will be there for you to select. Note that at least one opportunity field and at least one company field needs to be mapped for duplicate checking. Contact fields are optional. If you have more than one opportunity of a particular kind with the same company, make sure that you identify each with a unique identifier, such as a policy number, to ensure you update the correct one. There you go. Another great time saver from Maximizer. Bye for now.